Okay, hi everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ma Biala. Hi, Mandla. Okay, while we're waiting for everyone else to join, um, hi, Was, can you guys let me know if you guys can hear me clearly? Everything good? Okay, cool. I'm going to share screen now. Just give me a moment. Can I check if everyone can see my screen? Can everyone see my screen and can hear me properly? Um, okay, nobody can see my screen. Give me a sec, guys. Okay, now can you see my screen? Hi, Lisa. Hi, hi, Manla. Can you guys let me know if you can see my screen and if you can hear me? I'm not sure if you guys can hear me because usually by now someone would have answered me already. I'm not sure if it's because the chat box isn't working or if you guys cannot hear me. If anyone hears me and can see my screen, can you just let me know in the chat box so that I know I'm not talking to myself? Okay. All right. Okay. I'm just going to start then. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our live analysis session today by Ian, brought to you by INFX. So, what we do in this uh, live analysis session is that we would go into Trading View. We will analyze the charts together and I'll show you guys how I analyze the charts and then you guys can decide for yourself if you want to take the trade or not. Okay, just a risk warning. Please do not construe this webinar as any signals group, um, financial advice or in any way at all, um, a forecasting group. Okay, the whole point of these webinars is to help you guys grow as traders, right? And of course, to help you grow your account. So if you do have any questions at all regarding trading, don't be shy to ask. Um, but yes, I do need to remind you guys, trading is not for everyone. I mean, I do think it's for everyone, but only if you learn the basic fundamentals and if you master risk, your risk management. Okay, I think risk management is so crucial in trading. So yes, please, please be cautious, especially if you are new here. Okay, so a little bit about me. I'm going to introduce myself for those who don't already know me. My name is Cassandra. You can call me Cass. I am an investment analyst for the award-winning research firm, Everest Fortune Group. I am also a prop trader. Okay, I am managing quite a bit of funds. And I think uh, like more importantly, what you guys should know about me in terms of trading is that I have passed multiple 
um, prop trading tests, such as the test by FTMO and my Forex fund multiple times. So for those who don't know what these tests are, this test requires a trader to do eight to 10% within a month of trading. So within 30 days, so actually 22 days of trading because the weekends are not counted, I have to do 8% for my Forex fund and 10% for FTMO. So I've passed that multiple, multiple times. And the other rule about this test is that you cannot have a drawdown of more than 5% within a day and 12% within the month. If not, you fail the test. So how I did, how I passed these tests is to identify key levels of reversal through combination of supply and demand, which is like su uh, support and resistance, combining with Fibonacci confluence and combining with indicators and overall market trend, which I will be showing you guys in today's webinar how exactly how, how I would be getting um, my trades on a normal day. Okay, um, so as of today, I think today is the 17th of November. I am officially about 5% in profit for this month. Okay, and whatever I share with you guys today is exactly how I got my 5% for the month, right? I won't be sharing anything that didn't help me be profitable because then it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> so yes, I will be sharing how I got there. And my journey in trading is to get $1 million funding. Um, but that's my own journey. Whatever journey you guys are taking, I hope that these webinars do help you get closer to whatever goal it is you're trying to achieve with trading. Okay, hey, hey, welcome back. Hey, Christine, I saw, I remember you from yesterday. Um, Muhammad, I remember you from yesterday. Joash, I think you were here yesterday as well. So welcome back, guys. Nice seeing you guys back again today. Hopefully we find some trades. Hopefully we make some profit today. But again. Disclaimer, only enter the trade if you yourself agree. Okay, so agenda for today is chart analysis using technical analysis, of course, and implementing a strategy, the strategy that I use on a normal basis. The chat box is still disabled. Mm, that is so weird. I honestly, does anyone know how to enable the chat box? Can you guys let me know in the Q&A section? I can see Christine's, um, is that why when I was asking if you guys can hear me and see my screen, nobody, nobody was answering? I see the chat box, but there's just no response or whatsoever. I think this was happening yesterday as well. Um, okay, so if you guys want to communicate with me, I think there's a Q&A box that you can use to communicate with me. Um, otherwise, I really have no idea at this current point of time how to enable the chat. Uh, thanks for letting me know, Christine. Thanks, D. Okay, it's disabled for D as well. Does anyone know a trick for Zoom to enable the chat box? I'm clicking on all the settings. I'm clicking on more. Let me see, live, disable, annotation, enable. I don't see an option where I can enable the chat, but it's okay. I guess you guys already found a way to communicate with me, which is from the Q&A box, but thanks for letting me know. I will feed back to NFX or after this, I'll figure it out how to enable the chat box. Okay, uh, yes. In the meantime, if you guys have anything, do ask me in the Q&A section, not in the chat, because for some reason it's not working. I have no idea how to enable it to, okay. Hi. This, did you guys receive my hi message? I don't know if you can respond to my hi, but it doesn't matter. Again, you can just talk to me in the Q&A session. Okay, let's move on. Uh, yes, risk warning, you guys already know that. Let's go to the live charts so that we can... Let me share screen. Okay, can everyone see my um, screen? I should have trading view on right now. Christine? D, 
not sure about the rest because uh, okay thank you christine sorry about the rest if you guys are trying to communicate me on the chat i hope you guys have that q a box that christine and d are using to talk to me i do see quite a lot of you here today so Again, the whole point of INFX creating these webinars is to help you guys grow your account. So it would really be a shame if you cannot ask me questions about trading. Okay, so before we start with the analysis session, I want to show you guys a few things. The first is to let you guys know to go to vip.infx.com slash app. If you don't already have an account, if you don't already have an INFX VIP room account, I really suggest you guys go. It would really help you guys, especially if you are new to trading. Even if you're not new to trading, it is a platform that you can use to help you with your trading. So as long as you have a deposit of at least $250 with INFX, you will be able to create this account for free. So what is the good thing about this? So on a daily basis, our traders here and our analysts we have full-time traders and full-time analysts here that updates the news. Okay, so fundamental analysis, for example, Euro, the Euro news. So on a daily basis, we'll update saying uh, what's going on with the Euro, what's going on with the USD, what's going on with the JPY. Okay, first things first. And then we move into technical analysis where you go into the charts. So we have majors, commodities, indices, crypto, forex, pairs, and crosses. Okay, let's click on US 30, for example. You go into US 30 on a daily basis, we will give our technical analysis on where we think the markets are going. Uh, sorry, it's loading. Okay, so the charts will appear and you can see uh, the JD Tai is one of our trader and our, one of our analysts here at Everest Portugal. He's a very, very good trader. He has made profit more like millions of dollar at one point he was um I think he's managing up to 20 million at his current point of time time he has hedge fund experience and whatnot and um on a daily basis he will update on a technical point of view technical analysis point of view like on the h4 chart the overall bias of dji and then you can see this part that's underlined if you just hover your mouse over it you can see what he's trying to highlight here okay Okay, on top of that, why I think this is so useful, especially for new traders, is that if you are new to trading, right? If you are new to trading and you're just learning technical analysis, the thing for technical analysis, you don't know if you're doing it right unless someone is correcting you and someone is telling you, hey, that's not how you draw a trend line. That's not how a channel should be drawn. Hey, I think your support and resistance can be drawn better. Okay, so what you can do is once you have an account, for example, you spot a trend line, Okay, so you're going to plot this trend line. Okay, and now you're, you don't know if this trend line is, uh, you can go, no, it's, so on your desktop, you go to vip.infx.com. Okay, so let me just copy this link here. I'm gonna drop it in the chat box, which I have no idea if you guys can see or not. Okay, so it's vip.infx.com slash app. Okay, so that is the link you can go to to sign up. Okay, so once you made an account, you can get all the help that you need. So you're drawing this trend line and because you're new, you're not sure if this is a correct trend line or not. You can just tag one of our traders, okay? So you tag, um, so we've got, they uh JD Tai, who is a prop trader. We've got Jianning, who is a prop trader, Annabelle, who's a prop trader. We've got all these other senior traders. They are not working with us, but they are just members on the chat who may have a lot of experience in trading. You can just ask whoever it is. Okay, so for example, I'm just gonna ask Desmond, he's our chief trader. And you can ask, hey Desmond, hey, is this a valid trend line? Okay, and then you're going to ask the question. What you're going to do now is you are going to highlight the word trend line, the technical analysis that you're using. You're going to click on this button, link object to text. Click on it, and then now click on your trend line. Okay, click confirm. Click enter, and your message would have sent in. So, hey, is this a valid trend line? So, Desmond, 
uh, the same day or the next day, or wh whenever it is he sees your message, he'll get a noti notification and he'll seal your message and it says, hey, is this a valid transaction? Okay, so Desmond, as with all his experience, he will reply you with, hey, um, so-and-so, this is not a valid trend line, okay? So he will then tell you why it's not a valid trend line. So a valid trend line requires three touches, right? So one, one touch, two touch, and it looks like it's touching the third time, but why this is not a valid trend line? It's because on the third touch, it's not a complete move. So this move is not completed yet. So we cannot consider this as the third trend line. And therefore, when Desmond sees this, he will tell you, hey, so-and-so, this is not a valid trend line. A, a valid trend line will require three touches with a complete move. Okay? So that's how you can get your help, um, especially if you are new to technical analysis. We are very heavy on technical analysis here. We are very, very strong. We're one of the, in, one, we're one of the lead industries player in technical analysis. We advise a lot a lot of brokerages, banks, um, hedge funds based on technical analysis. So I think you guys will be in good hands. Just create an account and get the help that you need with technical analysis, okay? Oh, one thing cool too is that, for example, you accidentally deleted everything, right? You accidentally deleted your trend line, but because you highlighted the word trend line here, if you just hover your mouse around the word trend line, your trend line is going to reappear again. So. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Okay, that's one. The other thing I want to share, guys, is that if you need more help, you can go to INFX on uh, INFX's page on YouTube. Just click on INFX. You will see so many videos. We have 4,600 videos. Okay, a lot of these videos will help you on, if you want to learn certain things. For example, you want to learn the moving average. You want to learn Fibonacci. You want to learn whatever. Most Unless we haven't already taught it, chances are the video is going to be here somewhere. You can watch it and you can learn technical analysis in that way. Okay, so uh, it also comes in different languages. I really think this is really important, right? Because when I started trading, like I didn't have these this kind of help. I didn't have like, I didn't know about YouTube. I didn't know people were posting videos on YouTube. So I actually went to pay for courses. Those courses were not cheap. They were like a few thousand dollars just to learn something as simple as moving average. Okay. So now that you guys have all these resources for free, do use it because I do think trading will change your life. Like honestly, it will change your life. Like especially your lifestyle. Okay. Um, Friday, how do I start? Um, I think, do, how do you start in terms of the VIP room or if you're talking about a VIP room, can just go to vip.infx.com slash app, just create an account and you can start from there. Okay, I'm gonna go straight into the charts. We're gonna start with XAUUSD. If you guys have any requests of for any particular pair, it can be commodity, cryptocurrency, indices, forex pairs, whatever it is, just request in the Q&A box. Don't request in the chat box because apparently it's disabled. Do request in the Q&A box. We're gonna start with gold. Why? Because I do have an entry for gold today. Okay, it looks like that goal entry is over. Okay, so I just missed you guys for half an hour. I'm so sorry if we started this webinar half an hour ago. My entry for goal would have been 17, sorry, yeah. About maybe an hour ago, my entry for goal would have been 17, seven zero okay my stop loss would have been here and right now it just hit my take profit i was scalping uh it doesn't matter we can still look for an entry okay we can still look for an entry so i'm going to show you guys exactly on a daily basis how i look for my setups Okay, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I look my setup this exactly how i became a profitable trader exactly how i am 5% in profit as of this month, exactly what I do on a daily basis. Okay, so for those who joined yesterday, you already have a rough idea of how I do it. But I'm going to just do a recap for those who didn't join. 
yesterday. Okay, so to start, I always start with a clean chart. So remove all drawings and indicators so that you can start with a clear um, chart. Okay, so the first thing first you want to do, I don't know if you guys want to write this down. Okay, first thing first, you need to identify trend. Okay, by identifying trend, you would have won half the battle. Okay, so you need to know if price is going up or down. Is it going up or down? Because if it's going up, that means you want to look for a buy entry. If it's going down, that means you want to look for a sell entry. Oh, yes. By the way, for those who joined my webinar yesterday, remember I said that there was an entry at 1785. Um, I already took profit for that. I don't know if you guys went in at 1785. My entry was 1785. My take profits well, my take profit was 1775. So I made a good 1% yesterday. I hope you guys made some too. Let's hopefully find some today. Okay, so first thing first, you want to identify trend. How are you going to do that? There's a few ways you can identify trend. Number one, the simplest way, use a trend line. Okay, use a trend line. Find those three touches. You've got one touch here, two touch here, three touches. If you adjust it, it'll be four touches. Okay. So clearly in this area, it's a downtrend, right? But uh, because recently price have broken, we are now biased that it's going to be an uptrend. The recovery for gold may have already started. But the thing about recoveries or trend or anything, it never goes in one direction. So it's never just up. It's never just up in one way. So how charts always move is that it moves in waves. Okay, so even though it went up, we expect like a wave down and another wave up, a wave down, another wave up. So right now, it looks to me like it's doing a retracement. It's doing a pullback. So although my overall bias for gold, it's a buy. Okay, I at this current point in time, I think gold is a buy. I don't think, I think the sell is over. I think the downtrend is over. But I think at this current point of time, if you are scalping, if you are a day trader, um. You're going to look at the small movements, right? Because this is the daily chart. If you are a swing trader, then yes, you will want to be only looking at a buy. But because we are also day trading, we also want to play those small moves. Okay, we also want to play that small like pullbacks and stuff. So, and I do think it looks like right now goal is doing this. Okay, so right now I'm a bit biased to get in for a sell to play that pullback. Okay, which I already did. Let's see if we can find another entry. Okay, so we're biased that gold is going to pull back. The question is, where is it going to pull back to? So right now we're biased that it's a sell, right? We're biased again for a sell. I'm just going to identify some key levels. Identify some key levels. These are the levels that we think gold might stop at. Okay. This is one very strong level. It's not the prettiest. It does cut through structure a little bit, but I think it's okay. I think when it comes to 1728, goal is going to stop its retracement. It's going to do something like this and then something like this. Okay, that's just my very rough analysis. Okay, uh, before I continue, once you have identified your support and resistance, now you're going to back up your support and resistance with Fibonacci levels. I don't know why my Fibonacci is doing this. Prices. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, So for Fibonacci replacement, there are five levels of Fibonacci replacement. These five levels are levels between zero to 100. Okay, for those who are new here and you're a bit confused, like I think D was saying, I'm completely new to this. Uh, don't worry, D. Whatever I am teaching today can be a little advanced. I mean, you, if you think about it, this is what I use for my own trading style. And I have been trading for years and years and all this took me years to learn. So I'm just going to do an overall of how I do it. And then you can slowly break it down uh, for the parts that you don't really understand. Okay. Okay. So the first thing you want to do, identify trend, identify support and resistance, which we did already. Okay. So this is the resistance that we have identified. This is the support that we have identified. 
and now you want to back up your support and resistance with Fibonacci levels. Why do you do that with Fibonacci levels? This is for those who didn't attend yesterday. Okay, imagine this is you. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to draw a stickman. Okay, you are walking to the right. When you walk to the right, you reach a door. Okay, if the door is heavy, if the door is locked, if there is boxes behind the door, if there's obstacles behind the door, you can keep pushing the door, but you are going to have a hard time opening the door and therefore you have no choice but to reverse. Okay, you're like, okay, I give up. I don't want to open this door anymore. I'm going to come back another time. Maybe I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to get some muscles. I'm going to get some muscles. Then next time when I come and I push the door, I'll be strong enough to push that door open. Okay, so this analogy is same as trading or the charts. The human represents price. The door represents support and resistance and direction represents buy or sell. Okay, so right now, price, recently price came to the resistance, which is the door. It tried to push the resistance and couldn't push the resistance open. So what is it doing? It's turning back. Okay, that means the bullish momentum is not strong enough. That means uh, price needs to turn back and come again another time to try to break this when the bullish momentum is strong. So same as the person is pushing the door, he can't open the door. What is he going to do now? He's going to go to the gym. He's going to train when he has muscles and when he's strong enough, he's going to come back and try to break the door open again. Okay, so similar to price, when the bullish momentum is strong enough, this time price will break. Okay, but in this current point of time, Price is not strong enough. It seems like it's not able to break at this current point in time. And how do we know that? This two red candle is the first sign of weakness. This two red candle is showing us weakness that the uh, price does not have enough bullish momentum to break this resistance and therefore it has to turn back. Okay, so where is it going to turn back to? We are now going to identify where is it going to turn back to. Okay, so similarly, this person is turning back because he can open the door. Where is he turning to? He's going to the gym. Okay, he's going to the gym. He's going to train. This is the gym. And once he is strong enough, he's going to try to go back to the door and break the door open. Okay, so Price is going to the gym at this current point of time. Where is the gym? The gym is usually that place where they, the glass key level so the last key level is usually the last swing high the last swing low so we can see that there is a swing high here you can see that there is a swing high here you can see that there was a tiny little swing high here you can see that there was a swing low here you can see that there's a swing low here so this is a very significant level this first of all is a very significant level why because price came here one two three four five times and it reversed it came here once it reversed Came here second time, it reversed. It came here the third time, this tiny one reversed a little. Came here the fourth time, reverse. Came here the fifth time, reverse. On the sixth time, it finally broke. And on the seventh time, when it comes here, I think it's going to reverse again. We're always biased that it's going to reverse. Okay. Let me get rid of all these drawings. Okay, so now that we have identified where the gym is, where we think price is going to reverse to, we are now going to identify the strength of this first support. The strength of this su first support is, again, the first support is kind of like the door, right? Okay, so price is going to get to this door. It's now going to get to the gym door, the door of the gym. And then it's going to try to open the door of the gym. And if it successfully opens, it's going to break through. If not, he he's like, okay, I'm going to turn back. I'm going back to my first resistance. How do you measure the strength of a support resistance. You back it up with Fibonacci, you back it up with indicators, okay? So back to our analogy of the door. If the door is locked, there's a lock here, this person will have a hard time opening the door, right? But also if behind the door there are boxes, very heavy boxes, this person will also have a hard time pushing the door open. So similarly, if you find Fibonacci levels lining up at the first support at all the first, your, your support resistance, it is, a representation that behind the door, there is boxes, there's obstacles behind the door, and therefore it's going to be even harder for that person to open the door, okay? Even harder for price to break it, and therefore it has no choice but to reverse. Okay, so now that we have identified our first support, we're going to measure the strength of the first support. Why? Because we're going to get in here for a sell, sell it to here, 
And when it reaches here, if we have identified that this first support is strong enough, here, we're going to get in with a buy. Okay, this is where we get in with a buy. Okay, you see how this works. You're going to get in with sell, you're going to buy. It doesn't matter where trend is going. It's best to follow trend, but sometimes you can just play again trends because of your day trading. Okay, we are going to identify. Um, we have identified that. I see that there is a 38.2 Fibonacci retracement there. That's one Fibonacci level. On a minimal, I like to see at least three Fibonacci levels lining up in the exact same area. It just makes me feel that area is so strong. Price is going to have such a difficult time uh, breaking it. And therefore, if price gets here, I'm definitely going to get in for a buy. Okay, so let's see what other levels um, I can find from this area. Okay, I see a 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. It's not the best, but it's there. Okay, why? When I find Fibonacci levels, I want them all to be close together. Okay, like the like if you put paper together, if you stack paper together, one piece of paper is very thin. But if you stack multiple pieces of paper and you try to tear it, you're going to have a hard time because there's a lot of resistance. Okay, so we've got 61.8 Fibonacci retracement, uh, Fibonacci projection here. We have got a 6. 38.2 Fibonacci retracement here. I would say this area is definitely an area of resistance. This area is an area you want to look out for when price gets here. Okay, I'm going to highlight this area because it's the area you will be looking for when price gets here. Remember to consider getting in for a buy. Okay, you're going to consider getting in for a buy because this is the area of resistance you uh, this area of support has a lot of resistance and therefore when it gets here, it's going to have a hard time breaking. It's not going to break. I don't think it's going to break. I think here it's going to bounce. Okay. Okay. So now that we have done our analysis on the daily, okay, on the daily, I think this is what it looks like down, then up, right? Okay. Sorry. Down, then up up to here, if the bullish momentum is strong enough, it's going to break this resistance and then go much higher. Okay, that's just my very overall uh, generic analysis right now. Now we're going to go down to a small time frame. Okay, we're going to go down to a small time frame because these are more for day traders. The analysis that I did earlier on, these are more for swing traders. Swing traders are people who hold their trade more than a day or two days, some day, sometimes a week or a month. These are people who are very busy. Maybe they, they run businesses. Maybe they, they travel a lot. Maybe they don't have access to internet all the time. They're very busy or for whatever reason it is. So they swing trade, okay? But I think majority of us here are day traders. If you're not a day trader, I don't think you'll be able to attend this webinar, right? Day traders are people who they look at the screen at least once a day right? They, they look at the screen on a daily basis and they look for setups on a daily basis, okay? So when we go down to a small time frame, we will be able to look for closer entries, closer stop loss and closer take profit, okay? On the daily, the entry for the buy is here, 1727. It's not going to get there by today. It might, but chances are it's not going to get there by today. Maybe next week, right? Because today's already Thursday. Um, the sell already started at 17 yesterday. If you attended my webinar, I said that there was a sell at 1785. Uh, but because we're day trading, we would have taken profit already. Okay, so let me see if I can find a closer entry. Okay, I can find a closer entry. Okay, one entry is for sure. Oh, sorry. Okay, similarly to the day time frame, we are very biased that price is moving in an uptrend. Um, okay, price recently broke the downtrend, the uptrend. Okay, on the four hours, price recently broke the ascending trend line, meaning that there will be a, a short or a bearish movement. Okay, but on the bigger time frame, we are bias that it is a buy. Remember that. Okay, so on the smaller time frame, it can go down, 
but on the bigger time frame, overall, it is still going up. Okay, so this is in alignment with our analysis right now. I love this. This is really in alignment. Okay, so one place of entry that I would really love to see is here. Actually, honestly, this is the best entry that I see. Right now, I, I really did miss you guys. Like if we started this webinar one hour ago, I would have told you to get into gold at 1775 area, 175. Yeah, this area, and we would have made some profit already. I my trade just hit take profit. Okay, it just hit take profit. I probably made a zero point five percent today. Zero point five percent might sound very little, but if you're thinking on the one million dollars account, zero point five percent is actually five thousand dollars today, right? That's why percentage you always count your profit and your losses in percentage wise okay so i think the very good entry is this area i would love to see price pull back to this area and then here you get in for the sell again a second time okay if it pulls back in the short term if it doesn't pull back i think chances are it's already on its way down okay it's on its way down that means that means Unfortunately, we will not have a trade until it gets here and we only have to wait for the buy. So there's two area on the very short term. Let me see if the possibility of price getting back there. Okay, sorry, my sell entry was 1770 here. Okay, I, I can get you guys a trade, but it's... Probably not gonna play it today. For those who are impatient, I just want to write this down. Oh, sorry. Trading is 10% selling, 10% buying, 80% of the time you're just waiting. So unfortunately we have found analysis, but it seems like it's not right now. We're gonna have to wait. I'm gonna go to the even smaller time frame so that I can try to find you guys the setup. Okay, so we're going to identify some support resistance here. Okay, and then we are going to play those support resistance. We are going to trade within those support and resistance that I see. Okay, I think price will definitely go from here to here, okay? And eventually from here to here, okay? It's not definitely, but I have a high, I think it's a high possibility it's gonna get there, okay? So to confirm this, right? Let me just highlight this as well. Don't be confused. I know that there's a lot of supports and there's a lot of resistance right now. I did multiple analysis for different kinds of trader. I did one for the string trader, and I'm going to do it for the scalper. Okay. Um, price might break this area. Okay. If it breaks this area, if it breaks the first support, usually after a break, price tends to do this. Look, price came here. It broke this, this area. Do you see it broke this area? After a break, it usually comes back and retests that area. It retests the area. If it rejects the area, that is your second chance of getting in for a sell. Okay, that is your chance for getting in for a sell. Okay, so right now, what I'm trying to say is you have two possible area of entry. One is that you wait for price to break this area, break this first support, come back to test this area, wait for a rejection candle, wait for a reversal pattern candlesticks. I won't be able to, to go through that with you. You guys can get Google reversal pattern candlesticks. Just go to the image or read up about it, whatever it is you want to do to learn this. Okay, there are so many examples of reversal pattern candlesticks. If you see a reversal pattern candlesticks, that is a confirmation for you to get into the trade. Okay, so you're going to wait for this break, wait for price to come back and retest this area, and then you can get in for the sell.
from your first support to your second support. If price breaks your second support, it's going to go down even lower. If it doesn't break, it doesn't matter. It doesn't concern us anymore. Our trade only lasts from here to here. For those who want to hold the trade a bit longer, you can wait for the break of second support and then you can move your stop loss to entry. Okay, for those who are new here, I'm sorry. I, this may be confusing for you, but for those who are already trading on a daily basis, you would know what I'm talking about. We're moving our stop loss. We're, we're doing a risk we trade, okay? So you're gonna wait for the pullback and you're gonna enter, okay? This is option one. Option two. Option two. If price does not break the first support, it means that it's gonna reverse, okay? It's going to reverse. Where is it gonna to reverse to? It's gonna come back to this first resistance. When it gets back to this first resistance, you are going to look for a reversal pattern candlestick as a confirmation, a rejection candle. Once you see that, that is your chance to get in for the sell. That means we are ultimately looking for a sell entry. Yes, you can get in for a buy if you want. You can if you want, but right now we are trying to play the trend. Right now the trend is a downtrend, okay? Price has started its downtrend. Why? Because it was initially in an uptrend, but price broke this area, okay? It broke which is a first signal of a downtrend. So therefore, right now, we're a bit more biased to get in for a sell. So we are looking for a sell. The sell can either be from your first support to your second support, or it can be a pullback to your first resistance, and it can be from your first resistance to your first support. Let me back this up with indicators. If Ichimoku agrees, yes. Ichimoku agrees, I love this. For those, for those who don't know how to use Ichimoku, Ichimoku is a very, very powerful indicator. Okay, I'm just going to run through briefly how to use Ichimoku. Okay, you can see whenever the Ichimoku price breaks the Ichimoku cloud, it just moves in that direction very nicely. Right now, we have just broken the Ichimoku cloud on the downside. We are hoping a bit of, um, sorry, a bit of, room to the downside until, until uh, it breaks the cloud again for the second time. Okay, so Ichimoku is agreeing with our analysis. It is agreeing with our cell analysis. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We are just going to patiently wait. Unfortunately, this is not one of those uh, signal groups where like, where it's like, enter now, okay? It's not, you're gonna have to wait. I'm gonna give you an analysis. You guys decide for yourself if you want to get in and then you get in if you wanna get in, okay? So this is your possible entry one. If it pulls back here, that's your entry for yourself. If it doesn't, if it breaks here, that's your entry for yourself. This is gonna be a take profit. This is gonna be your even for the take profit. This is for those who want to hold for long, okay? I don't usually hold this long. I usually when it reaches my take profit zone, I immediately get out. Okay, so sell entry. I'm gonna change this to sell entry slash take profit. Why? Because it could be from here to here, or it could be from here to here, or it could even be. It could even be from here to here, okay? Guys, I, I have to tell you, I need to remind you, your job as a trader or a technical analyst is just to identify those short movements, catch those short movements, and you are going to make a lot of profit. This profit is going to change your life. It's going to make your life better. I personally have been traveling a lot. Um, I know recession is coming. I'm not even afraid because trading has given me a lot of freedom. So I think this is a very good skill to master. I really, really, really recommend you guys mastering this skill, okay? It's a very, very good skill to master, right? At one point I was just traveling and traveling. I didn't have to marry. I was like a digital nomad because of trading. So that's why, please master this skill. Okay, so stop loss is here. If this is your entry, your stop loss is just gonna be slightly above this swing high. And if, 
your entry is here at the break and the pullback, your stop loss is going to be here, slightly above. Okay, slightly. I don't have a system or a, a guidebook to where you put your stop loss. My stop loss is usually just a rough estimation of where I think price is not going to reverse back to. Okay, so this is my analysis for XAUUSD for the short time frame. This is for the day traders, the scalpers here. For the swing traders, the best entry is here. Okay, you're waiting for the buy here. 1728, that's where you are waiting for the buy area. Okay, for the swing traders, we're going in for a sell. Oh, sorry, for the scalpers, day trader, we're going in for a sell. For the swing trader, you're waiting for the buy at 1728. So it depends if you're swing trading or if you're day trading. Okay, that's my analysis on gold. Uh, I just want to let you guys know, um, for those who trade a lot or whatever, as you look at different charts, as of today, I was saying I'm already 5% in profits, only the 17th of the month. 5% in profit, I only trade gold. You can trade other things. Why I trade gold? Because I'm so familiar with the characteristic of gold. I, when gold moves, I'm like, okay, gold, this is just how gold behaves, right? So I know gold, like the palm, uh, the, the back of my palm, I really, really am very familiar with the characteristics of gold. If you are someone who used to trade US 30, you can just keep trading US 30. If you're someone who trades Euro USD, you can trade the Euro USD. It's highly up to you. But technical analysis works for all charts, it works for all pairs. But I personally love to just trade gold because gold alone already makes me quite a bit of profit. I'm very used to gold. I already know its characteristics. So that's why on all my webinars, the first chart I analyze is always going to be gold. And because most of the time my win rate for gold is maybe 80%, I have a very high win rate for gold and that's also why I only trade gold. Okay, so if you guys have any other particular pair you want me to look at, do let me know in the chat box. If not, I am going to randomly choose, we still have 15 minutes. Usually in my webinars, I like to do one commodity, which is gold, obviously, one cryptocurrency and one Forex pair. So for cryptocurrency, let's just look at ETH USD. Or if you guys want to do BTC USD, let me know in the QA box. If not, I'm just going to look at ETH USD. Okay, ETH USD. The problem with cryptocurrency at this current point of time is that. Technical analysis can show you one thing, but you guys know fundamental analysis has been crazy lately. FTX just announced that uh, they just announced bankruptcy. I think there was another cryptocurrency firm that announced bankruptcy. All of this, because it's volume, will affect the prices of, the, of Ethereum and Bitcoin. And therefore, using technical analysis, I will be able to give you an analysis. I can give you a setup, but chances are, Fundamental analysis will have a stronger say to where price is going at this current point of time. Because we never know, maybe tomorrow Binance, Binance will be like, oh, we're bankrupt. Okay, and then everything will just drop. Okay, you, you never know for sure, although that's very hard to happen. But yeah, so just using technical analysis, I can just do my best to tell you where I think price is going. But ultimately, we need to take note that there's also still fundamental analysis that is still playing a part. Okay, so uh, one first things first, let's start with a day chart. It is a downtrend, it's very clear downtrend. Draw channel. Very, very, very clear downtrend. Uh, depending on how you plot, this will be a very beautiful channel. I don't have only have 10 more minutes with you guys i don't have time to like really adjust this channel but yes i'm sure if you adjust it properly it will fit very nicely okay so we are buyers that price is moving in a downtrend we will be entering for a sell or bias to get in for a sell because of the bearish momentum okay let's just highlight some support and resistance i'm going to quickly do the analysis so that i can cover one more forex charts before we end this webinar Okay, there is a resistance right now, but looking at how like fundamentally 
bad crypto is doing, I don't even think price will have a problem breaking this. I think price is going to break this and just keep going lower. Okay, but that's just my personal bias at this current point of time. I'm going to highlight this as support. Second support. We're always highlighting things so that we don't confuse ourselves. Do you have webinars for newbies? Yes, we do have webinars for newbies. You can go look at our old videos on INFX um, YouTube page and you can find all these videos. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you a list for those who are new here of things that you should be learning in terms of technical analysis. Remember when it comes to trading, there's many, many different things. There is technical analysis, there's fundamental analysis, there's what sentimental analysis I've heard someone say that before uh, there's different ways to get a analysis but the way that I we specialize here is we use a lot of technical analysis okay so let me just write down a list of things technical analysis that you should start pen line support resistance Fibonacci. This one is quite hard. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. You will not learn this in five minutes. Fibonacci is not something you can master in five minutes. Okay, um, indicators. Maybe Ichimoku, RSI. Let me see. Stochastics. What other indicators can you learn? Remember, there's hundreds of indicators out there. There's no point learning all of them. Only learn the ones that are useful to your analysis. These are the ones I find that I use more often than not. Ichimoku, RSI, uh, moving average. Let me see. Um, oh yes, MACD is good too. I don't use it all the time, but it is a good indicator to learn. And then once you are done learning number one to number four, you're going to combine all of it, one to four, to find your analysis. Okay, it's exactly what I am doing. I am first looking for trend. So once you find a trend, trend can be trend, can be channel, can be just looking for lower low, lower highs, okay? Just looking for trend, basically, okay? So I always start by looking for trends. So I've already established. Is it possible for predictions of trades to be completely wrong? Yes, it is totally possible. Um, that's a very good question. So trading, what trading is, it's basically a collection of data, right? So your, your job as a trader is a kind of technical analysis, or whatever kind of trader you are, is to collect data. And then from the data that you have collected, you are going to make a decision. So when you make a decision, your decision can still be wrong, but it doesn't matter if you are wrong because you were making the decision based on a sound collection of data. You didn't do it based on a feeling. You didn't feel, if you're, you're making a decision based on feeling, that's gambling, right? So it's not like you're like, oh, I feel like gold is going to go down. I feel like gold is going to go up. Oh, I just, I heard from someone that gold is going to go down. No, right now you are using all of this technical analysis. Technical analysis is telling you whether it's going up or down, okay? So right now, technical analysis, like for gold was telling me that it's going down, but I can be wrong. There's a possibility. Maybe I analyzed the chart wrong. It doesn't matter. So there's no way to be 100% correct. Your job as a trader is to minimize your losses and increase your wins. So you can be correct six times and wrong four times. You can be wrong four times and correct six times and you are still correct at the end of the day because you are correct more times than you are wrong. Okay, so don't worry about being wrong. Being wrong is everything to do with trading psychology. I know it sucks because I think as humans, I, I don't know about you guys, but us as Asians, especially growing up, like being wrong at something means you're 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 horrible. It's not good to fail. But in trading, failing is totally perfectly fine. If you fail, if you are wrong, just go back, review your analysis, review why you were wrong. So look back. Um, whenever I'm wrong, I usually go back to the chart. I'm like, hmm, okay, what did I do wrong? Why did I think it was a sell? 
when actually it was a buy. So I looked up, I'm like, oh, okay. So actually I drew my channel wrong. Oh, actually my support and resistance was drawn wrongly. Okay, so anytime you are wrong, don't worry about it. Just go back, revise, and see what you could have done better to minimize the error the next time you penetrate. Okay, uh, I only got five more minutes. Let me just quickly do an analysis for ETH USD. Okay, I do think it is a sell. Is it going to bounce from here? I think unlikely. I think this is a very pathetic support. Oh, okay. On the You can see price kind of moving in this area here. It's been moving. Came here. I think what's going to do, I think eventually it might break break this for support eventually. But for the last one, two, three times, it's having a hard time breaking this first support. Okay, so it makes me a bit biased to think that um, it's not going to break this first support. And I think it might just bounce from here. Just might just bounce from here. Okay, and that's why you have a stop loss. So you put your stop loss here. That's why it's okay to be wrong in trading. If you, let's say I, I decided I'm going to get in here for a buy, right? I'm going to get in here for a buy. This is my take profit. That's why you always have a stop loss. The stop loss is just an insurance that in case you are wrong, price hits your stop loss and you don't lose so much. Okay, so let's say we get in here for that buy. Your risk to reward will be one to about three. Okay, one to three. One to three means that if you have a $100,000 account, you are risking on, I always tell this everyone, only risk one to 3% per trade. Don't risk more than what, um, you don't need to risk 50% of your account. If you have $100,000, you don't need to risk $50,000, okay? If you have $100,000, you risk $1,000, okay? So a one to three trade means that you are risking $1,000 to make $3,000. You see how that works? You need to win one time and you make 3,000, but if you lose, you lose 1,000. I think the risk to reward is amazing, okay? So therefore, if you enter here for a buy, if you are wrong, you lose 1,000, totally fine. If you're correct, you make 3,000. If you lose that 1,000, that's okay. Move on. Find your next winning trade. Go on to a chart or reanalyze your chart and find your next winning trade. If your next trade is a 1 to 3, even though you just lost 1,000, if you win the next trade, you win 3,000, it eliminates your loss of 1,000 and you still need 2,000 at the end of the day. Okay, you see that's why it is no problem being wrong in trading. The whole point about trading is you have to be correct more times than you are wrong. That's all you have to do. It's okay to be wrong. It's totally fine. Okay, uh, I do think just my very, 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 very rough analysis, I think this buy is possible. My confidence level for this is not that strong. Okay, if I had to make a decision if I really wanted to enter this trade, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't enter this trade, okay? Let me see if I can find that even closer, take profit, okay? If I were to enter this trade, which I won't, okay? I won't enter this trade for a buy because I now see that there is a rectangle, okay? So a rectangle means that price is moving within this, uh, Sorry, not rectangle, triangle thingy, okay? So I don't think price can even reach the first resistance. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to my original bias of a sell, okay? I'm going to stick with my original bias of sell. I want price to break this first support area, okay? I'm going to adjust the first support, okay? I want price to break this first support area, once it breaks this first support area, I am going to wait for a retest. And then here at the retest, once I see a reversal pattern candlestick, I am going to enter for a sell to the second support, okay? So the criteria is one, it needs to break first support. Number two, it needs to come back and retest the area that it broke. Number three, 
it needs to have a reversal pattern candlestick. If these three requirements is fulfilled, I will get in for the sell. Okay, I'm going to sell it to the second support and I think it should be okay because why do I think this trade is okay? Number one, there's very strong bearish momentum with ETH USD. So the bearish momentum, chances of price just plunging is very high because of the momentum, the current momentum. Number two, let's add in indicators. Let's see what indicators are saying. Of course, the indicators are saying that it's a sell as well. So Ichimoku is saying that it's a sell. I'm sure if I pull out the RSI, and I'm sure if I pull out the other indicators, it will be agreeing as well. Okay, RSI isn't saying much, but using Ichimoku, which is a trend indicator, right? It is showing that it is a sell and it is agreeing with analysis. Okay, so at this current point of time, sorry, I've only managed to do two charts today. But I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, ETH USD, I think it's a sell, but you need to wait for the break and the retest to get in for that sell. Okay, um, goal, I think it's a sell as well. For the short term, it's a sell. For the long term, it's a buy. Okay, we're just waiting for price to get to that buy entry and then we're going to get for a buy. Okay, thanks everyone for joining our webinar. Hey, uh, thanks for those who came yesterday and you're back again today. Uh, uh, Christine, Joash, Mohammed. Um, thanks everyone. Thanks Antonio. I think Antonio was here too yesterday. Thanks B. Thanks Ricky. Thanks Was For those who are new in trading, I wish you all the luck. If you are discouraged, don't be discouraged. This is a skill that will really, really change your life. I do think that you should master this skill. If you are discouraged, I just want to quickly let you guys know that when I just started trading, I think the first three months I started trading, I lost a lot of funds. I lost like, like my life savings. I was only like 23 years old and I lost everything that I have saved at 23 years old and I had to start from zero again. And it's totally fine. Okay, the whole point is that you learn. And once you learn, you master the skill. Trust me, whatever you lost, it's going to look like peanuts. Okay, so <laughs> good luck, everyone, in your journey, in this trading journey. I hope you master this skill. Okay, bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you guys again soon.